Well, let's use our noise texture trick again on this orange here. I'll zoom in here. And uh, let's go ahead and turn on the rendered viewport shading right here so we can see it as we adjust our material. Now it is selected, so I'll go ahead and add a new material over here and I'll just call it orange. In addition, I will add a glossy shader here, shift A, shader, glossy, and a mix shader as well. Put that in here and combine those two into our material output. So now we can see our orange is a little shiny. We need to change it to an orange or the color orange here. Let's maybe give it a nice orange color, maybe a little bit brighter than that. Something like that. And also we have this stem here. We need to split that out as well. So I'll go back to my solid viewport shading, go into edit mode, and I'll hover over this piece right here and select the L key. And let's create a new material slot for it and we'll call this um, orange stem. And we'll give that a green for now. We don't need to have it be anything special quite yet. Something like that. And I'll click Assign. All right, so now let's go back to our rendered viewport shading. And so there we have our stem. It's a little bit too bright. Maybe I'll bring it down to the brown end of the spectrum a little bit. Something like that for now. We'll work on that here in a bit. Let's go back to our orange. And what I want to do here is try and add some texture to the orange the way we did for the paper towel. Now it is of course a little bit too shiny here. I'll take this down to point 2 perhaps. And now let's go ahead and add a noise texture with shift A texture noise. And also let's add a converter to convert from RGB to black and white. Connect up those color sockets. Let's also add once again a math node and switch it to multiply. And then we'll connect those up and this into the displacement socket. And here we go. That's not quite what I was going for. But that's okay. We'll take the scale up to say 50. See how that works. And that's getting there, but still not quite what I was wanting. Let's take the multiply value down to like 0 0.01. See if that helps any. So now we're getting something that's a little bit more like an orange skin. We have that slight bump on our material. However, one thing that I'm seeing here is that the orange color is too uniform. It's too perfect. We need a little bit of differentiation in the color of the surface of the orange. So to do that, let me bring this window down a bit so we have a little bit more room in our node editor up here. And what I'm looking for is some sort of difference in color here coming into the diffuse shader. So once again, I think we can use a noise texture. I'll bring one of those in, a noise texture here. And if we feed it into the color, we see we get that. And that's not quite what we want. What I'd like to do is be able to adjust the color here before it goes into the diffuse shader. So let me unconnect that. And to do that, let's bring in a color ramp. So Shift A and let's go to the converter and color ramp. And here we have a node that will allow us to mix multiple colors in here on this color ramp. So I'll go ahead and connect the gray factor socket to here and the color to here. Now you can see we've got the differentiation in color coming from the noise texture, but we have it just as black and white from the color ramp. So we can change our colors here. 
I'll select this color stop and now let's change that color to an orange again something like this and now we have that orange mixing with the black defined by our noise texture so maybe I'll select this color stop here and then change its color to oh maybe a green of some sort let's try a a greenish color like this maybe a little bit darker like that now you can see we've got the orange and the green mixing together which is okay but I think I want a little bit more orange so there are a couple of ways to do this now we can move from one color stop to the other with this arrow here or we can choose them up here so if I move to the orange color I can take this and I can drag it toward the green we can see what happens there and in doing that the orange almost pushes out completely the green if I move it back toward this way the green begins to come back so maybe what I can do is keep this color stop here, add a new one by clicking on the plus, and then moving this one a little closer to the green. Now I kind of like this. It just gives a hint of that green, but lets the orange shine through for the most part. That's not bad. I think it's still a little too shiny. We could maybe try and bring the roughness up in the glossy maybe to point three so in this way we can use something like a noise texture for both the bump or displacement of our object and we can also use it to add extra color to the object now i could add more color stops here maybe a brown one we could even maybe take this particular one and make it more of a brown something like something like this perhaps now you get more of that brown in there among the orange and the green we could move this closer to the green and see what happens there we could move it back toward the orange so there's a lot of different possibilities here what I'll do now is go ahead and add this particular orange material to the other oranges in the bowl so uh, it looks like this one is an orange let me just switch over to our solid view it looks like this one is an orange and this one is an orange here so what we can do is if we select this orange shift select this one and then shift select the one with the material on it we can then press Control L and link our materials to the ones that do not have a material and now these have the same material if we switch back to the rendered viewport we can see that we've added that orange material now we still need to go into each one and add the green for the stems and we may want to add a color ramp and some noise to the stems as well but in that way once we create a material we can add them to other objects very quickly well, I'll go ahead and add some materials to the other objects in the scene. And in the next video, let's take a look at some different ways of lighting our scene using both HDR images and using other objects as a light source as well.